Well, Spring MUC is one of the popular module in Spring framework. It is used to develop web applications as well as RESTful web services. Well, if you look at the diagram over here, Spring framework has a lot of modules. For example, Spring framework has Spring MUC module, Spring Webflow, Spring Security, Spring Integration, Spring Web Services, Spring Data, Spring Batch, Spring Social, and so on. All right. So all these modules in Spring Framework have their own purpose. For example, Spring MUC is used to develop web applications as well as RESTful web services, and Spring Security is used to secure Spring-based applications, and Spring Data is used to develop the persistence layer in a Spring-based applications, and Spring Batch is used to perform batch operation, and Spring Web Services is used to develop the SOAP web services. All right. So all these modules in a Spring Framework have their own purposes. And Spring MUC is one of the popular modules among these modules in Spring Framework to develop the web applications as well as RESTful web services. Well, Spring Framework is called a web framework because it provides all the required components to develop a complete web application. All right. And Spring MUC Framework provides a model view controller architecture and ready components that can be used to develop a flexible and loosely coupled web applications. What is Dispatcher Servlet? Well, Dispatcher Servlet is basically a heart of Spring MUC because Dispatcher Servlet acts as a front controller and all the HTTP requests that comes to the Spring MUC web application first comes to the Dispatcher Servlet and then Dispatcher Servlet will process that request and it will forward to the appropriate controller to handle that request. Well, Dispatcher Servlet, it acts as a front controller. Front controller is nothing but a common design pattern in a web applications and it is used to receive the requests and delegate to other components in the application for actual processing. Well, Dispatcher Servlet is front controller like it provides a single entry point for all the client HTTP requests to Spring MUC web application and it will forward that request to the Spring MUC controllers for actual processing. So Dispatcher Servlet, it acts as a front controller because it is a single entry point in a Spring MUC application. All right. And all the HTTP requests first come to the Dispatcher Servlet and then Dispatcher Servlet will decide which controller is responsible to process this request. And then Dispatcher Servlet will forward that request to that particular Spring MUC controller. Spring MUC controller will process the request and it will send model and view to the Dispatcher Servlet. And then Dispatcher Servlet uses View Resolver to resolve the view and it will send that view to the browser for rendering. Okay, so this is the main role of Dispatcher Servlet in a Spring MUC web application. Well, Dispatcher Servlet is actually a servlet and we can configure in a web.xml or using abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer class. Well, dispatcher servlet is nothing but actual servlet and basically we configure servlet in a web.xml file or we can use spring provided abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer class. Well, Spring Boot provides Spring Boot Starter Web Library for developing web applications using Spring MUC. And one of the main feature of Spring Boot is that auto configuration. Okay, so Spring Boot auto configuration registers and configures the dispatcher servlet automatically. Therefore, we don't need to register dispatcher servlet manually. This is awesome, right? Spring Boot provides Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency for developing web applications using Spring MUC. Okay, and Spring Boot will automatically configure Dispatcher Servlet whenever it will find Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency in a class path. Alright, just remember Dispatcher Servlet, it acts as a front controller and it is responsible to manage the HTTP request flow of the Spring MUC application. Next, let's understand what is controller. A controller in a Spring MUC web application is a component that handles incoming HTTP requests. For example, if you look at the code snippet over here, Post controller is the class and we made this post controller class as a Spring MUC component by using add controller annotation. And once we make this class as a Spring MUC controller, then this controller is capable to handle HTTP request. Well, Spring provides add controller annotation to make a Java class as a Spring MUC controller. The add controller annotation indicates that the particular class serves the role of controller. Well, if you look at the code snippet again, we have a post controller java class and it is annotated with add controller annotation well we can use add controller annotation to make this java class as a spring muc controller and once we make this java class as a spring muc controller by using add controller annotation then this class serves as a role of controller 
and it is capable to handle a incoming HTTP request. What is handler method in Spring MUC? Well, handler method is nothing but a method that is annotated with at request mapping annotation and it is capable to handle incoming HTTP request. Well, Spring provides get mapping and post mapping annotations to handle incoming HTTP get and post requests. In this course, we are going to use get mapping and post mapping annotations to handle HTTP get and post requests. And this get mapping and post mapping annotations are built on top of at request mapping annotation. Okay, instead of using at request mapping annotation, we can use get mapping and post mapping annotations to handle HTTP get and post request. Well, basically, we will define handler methods in a controller. For example, if you look at the code snippet over here, we have a post controller and it is a Spring MUC controller. And within a Spring MUC controller, we can define the handler methods, right? For example, you can see this is the handler method. It will handle HTTP get request using add get mapping annotation. And if you go inside get mapping annotation, you can able to see get mapping annotation is a combination of add request mapping annotation plus this get http request okay so instead of using at request mapping annotation we can use at get mapping annotation okay so basically get mapping annotation is a shortcut for request mapping annotation with get http method let me go back to controller and let's take a look into one more handler method in a spring mc controller well look at here this is the handler method to handle http post request using add post mapping annotation and if you go inside post mapping annotation you can able to see the post mapping annotation is a combination of add request mapping annotation plus the post http method okay so instead of using add request mapping annotation we can use post mapping annotation basically post mapping annotation is a shortcut for add request mapping annotation plus post http request method all right so just remember we define a handler methods within a spring mc controller and handler method will basically process the incoming http request based on the request type basically request type can be a get request or a post request and we use add get mapping annotation to handle http get request and we use add post mapping annotation to handle post http request well, handler method will process the HTTP request and it returns model and view. For example, if you look at the code snippet over here, this is the handler method to handle HTTP GET request and this handler method returns model and view. Just remember, we define a handler method in a Spring MVC controller and handler method is responsible to handle a particular HTTP request and the request can be a GET HTTP request or POST HTTP request. Next, let's take a look into what is view resolver. Well, view resolver is responsible to map logical view with the actual view and returns the actual view details back to the dispatcher servlet. For example, look at here, this is the handler method. It is responsible to handle HTTP GET request and it returns a model and view. So this handler method will basically returns a logical view name. Okay. And then view resolver will basically map this logical view with the actual view and returns the actual view details back to the dispatcher servlet. Spring Boot auto configures view resolver for timelib so we don't have to manually configure view resolver for timelib. Remember view resolver is responsible to map logical view with the actual view and it returns actual view details back to the dispatcher servlet and Spring Boot will automatically configure view resolver for timelib hence we don't have to manually configure view resolver for timelib. Next let's take a look into what is view. Well, view component will basically merge a view and model and it will produce a plain HTML output. And finally, view will return that plain HTML output to the dispatcher servlet. And then dispatcher servlet send that HTML output in a response to the browser for rendering. Okay. So just remember the role of view component is to merge view and model and create a plain HTML output and then send that plain HTML output back to the dispatcher servlet and then dispatcher servlet will pass that you know plain HTML output in a response so that it will be rendered in a browser. Next let's take a look into what is model. Well model is nothing but a Java Pojo class it encapsulates the application data. Well Spring MUC controller is responsible to create a model and it will store the application data and it will return back to the dispatcher servlet. Okay, just remember model is nothing but a Java Pojo class. It encapsulates the application data and Spring MUC controller is responsible to create a model data and it will store the application data in a model and then it will return back to the dispatcher servlet. 
Well, at autoward annotation is used to inject the bin automatically. The at autoward annotation is used in a constructor injection, setter injection, as well as in a field injection. Well, in case of annotation based loop configuration, we use at autoward annotation to automatically inject the spring bean. So, this at autoward annotation tells spring container to automatically inject the wedge pizza bean using this constructor. Next, let us see how to use at autoward annotation with setter injection. So here let me comment out this and let me quickly create a setter method. Alright, and let us annotate this setter method with at autoward annotation. Now this at autoward annotation tells spring container to inject this wedge pizza spring bean as a dependency using this setter method. Well, at path variable annotation is used on method argument to bind the value of URI template variable to a method argument. For example, look at here the code snippet. This is the hello world path variable method. It has a ID as a method argument. And look at here, we are using at get mapping annotation to map the incoming HTTP get request to this method. And you can see the URL, you know, hello world slash ID slash name. And ID you can see here. So this ID is basically called URI template variable. Next, we need to bind the value of this URI template variable to the method argument. So in order to do that, we use at path variable annotation. And look at here the response of this REST API in a screenshot over here. So client basically uses this URL to call this REST API that is localhost 8080 slash hello world slash 100 slash Ramesh. So 100 is basically a ID, Ramesh is a name. And this 100, 100 value will basically stored in this URI template variable that is ID and Ramesh, you know, name is basically stored in this URI template variable that is name. Next, we need to bind the value of this ID to a method argument, right? So in order to do that, we use add path variable annotation. We'll take a look into how Spring MUC works internally. Well, this diagram represents how an HTTP request is processed from start to end in a Spring MUC framework step by step. Step one, whenever a client sends an HTTP request to a specific URL, then dispatcher servlet of Spring MUC receives that request. Step two, the dispatcher servlet takes help from handler mapper to identify which controller is responsible to handle the incoming HTTP request. Step 3. Handler method selects the controller which is mapped to the incoming request URL and returns that controller details back to the dispatcher servlet. Step 4. Now the dispatcher servlet knows which controller is responsible to process the request. So dispatcher servlet will forward that request to the corresponding controller to process the request. Step 5. Now the controller processes the request and validates the request and creates a model with the data and finally controller will return the logical view name and model to the dispatcher servlet. Step 6. Dispatcher servlet consult view resolver to resolve the logical view with the actual view that exists in the application. Step 7. View resolver is responsible to map the logical view with the actual view and it returns the view details back to the dispatcher servlet. Step 8. Now dispatcher servlet has a view and model data. So it will send that view and model data to the view component. Step 9. The view component will merge the view and model data and it will create a plain HTML output and finally send that plain HTML output back to the dispatcher servlet. Step 10. The dispatcher servlet will send that HTML output as a response back to the browser for rendering. Alright, so these are the 10 steps involved in how Spring MUC works internally. Well, let me recap. Whenever a browser sends an HTTP request in a Spring MUC application, then dispatcher servlet it acts as a front controller and it will receive that incoming request and it consults to the handler method to identify which controller is responsible to handle that incoming HTTP request. Next, handler method will identify the corresponding controller and it will send that controller details back to the dispatcher servlet and then dispatcher servlet will forward that request to the controller and then controller will process that request and it validate that request and it will create the model data and it will finally return model and logical view name back to the dispatcher servlet and then dispatcher servlet will take a help from view resolver to resolve the logical view name with the actual view and then view resolver will send that actual view you know details back to the dispatcher servlet 
Next, dispatcher servlet will send that view and model data to the view component. Then view component will merge a view and model and it will produce an plain HTML output and then it will send that plain HTML output back to the dispatcher servlet. And finally, dispatcher servlet will send that HTML output as a response back to the browser for rendering. Okay, so this is how the Spring MUC works internally. Now we pretty much understood how the HTTP request is processed from start to end in a Spring MUC framework step by step. Alright great, I will see you in the next lecture.